clinical practice, magnesium supplements are one of the most frequently asked about topics. And here's what might surprise you. Recent research shows that up to 50% of adults in developed countries don't consume adequate magnesium from their diet alone. But before you rush to the supplement aisle, let me share something crucial. Not everyone needs magnesium supplementation, and for some people, it might actually be harmful. I'm Dr. Lorena Law, a medical doctor with training in nutritional and lifestyle medicine. And today, I'm going to walk you through an evidence-based framework for evaluating whether magnesium supplementation is right for you. The same approach used in clinical medicine every day. When evaluating magnesium supplementation, healthcare providers don't just recommend a supplement. We conduct a comprehensive assessment and you can apply the same framework at home. First, we look at medical history. Do you have kidney disease? That's a red flag. Magnesium supplements can be dangerous if your kidneys can't properly excrete excess magnesium. Are you taking medications? Magnesium can interfere with antibiotics like tetracycline and it can reduce the absorption of bisphosphonates used for osteoporosis. Next, we assess symptoms. Are you experiencing muscle cramps, particularly at night, difficulty falling asleep, frequent headaches? These could indicate suboptimal magnesium status, but they're not definitive. Many other conditions can cause similar symptoms. So in clinical practice, we also consider lab values when appropriate. While serum magnesium isn't perfect, it only reflects about 1% of your body's total magnesium, persistently low levels combined with symptoms can guide decision making. The research is clear. Magnesium assessment requires individualized evaluation, not a one-size-fits-all approach. Let me share what peer-reviewed research actually shows about magnesium supplementation benefits. For cardiovascular health, a 2024 umbrella meta-analysis of over 8,600 participants found that magnesium supplementation significantly reduces both systolic and diastolic blood pressure, but only at doses of 400 milligrams or higher, taken for at least 12 12 weeks. For diabetes management, a 2025 meta-analysis of 23 randomized controlled trials showed magnesium supplementation significantly improved fasting blood glucose in type 2 diabetes. However, the long-term effect of blood sugar control measured by HbA1c was minimal unless supplementation continued for at least four months. For migraine prevention, the evidence is particularly strong. Multiple randomized controlled trials show magnesium supplementation reduces both frequency and severity of migraines. But so here's what's crucial about risks. The most common side effect is diarrhea, which affects over 50% of people taking magnesium oxide at therapeutic doses. More concerning are the drug interactions I mentioned and the risk of hypermagnesemia in people with kidney problems. The research shows that benefits are real, but they're specific to certain conditions and require appropriate dosing and duration. Let me share three clinical scenarios that illustrate different risk-benefit profiles for magnesium supplementation. Case 1. A 45-year-old woman with frequent migraines and normal kidney function. She wasn't taking any medications that interact with magnesium. Based on the strong evidence for migraine prevention, magnesium glycinate 400 mg daily would be appropriate. Clinical studies show that this approach can reduce migraine frequency for up to 60% after 3 months. Case 2 a 68-year-old man with type 2 diabetes taking metformin and a bisphosphonate for osteoporosis. While magnesium could help his blood sugar control, the timing becomes critical. Healthcare providers would recommend spacing magnesium citrate two hours away from bone medications to prevent absorption interference. Case 3. A 72-year-old woman with stage 3 kidney disease asking about magnesium for leg cramps. Despite her symptoms, supplementation wouldn't be appropriate due to her reduced kidney function. Function. Instead, the focus would be on dietary sources and addressing other potential causes of her leg cramps. These cases show why individualized assessment matters. The same supplement that helps one person could be inappropriate or even harmful for another. Before considering supplements, healthcare providers always explore dietary optimization. The research shows that magnesium from food sources is generally safe and well absorbed. Here are specific strategies I recommend. Start your day with a quarter cup of pumpkin seeds. That provides a 156 milligrams of magnesium, about 37% of your daily needs. Add a handful of almonds as a snack. 
One ounce gives you 80 milligrams. For meals, incorporate dark leafy greens daily. A half cup of cooked spinach provides 78 milligrams. Choose whole grains over refined. Two large biscuits of shredded wheat cereal contain 61 milligrams compared to almost none in white bread. I also recommend what I call magnesium meal planning. Combine a spinach salad with cumpin seeds and have some dark chocolate as a dessert. Yes, dark chocolate is a good source. And you've created a magnesium rich meal that provides over 200 milligrams daily. The advantage of dietary sources is that they both come with cofactors that enhance absorption and don't typically cause the gastrointestinal side effects we see with supplements. When dietary sources aren't sufficient and clinical assessment indicates supplementation is appropriate, form becomes critical. The research clearly shows that not all magnesium supplements are created equal. Magnesium glycinate has an 80 to 90 percent absorption with minimal gastrointestinal side effects. This is the preferred choice for most people. Magnesium citrate has a good absorption at 30 to 40 percent, but can cause loose stools, which makes it useful if constipation is also an issue. Avoid magnesium oxide unless you specifically need a laxative effect. It has only 10 to 15 percent absorption and causes diarrhea in most people at therapeutic doses. For dosing, clinical guidelines typically recommend starting with 200 milligrams of elemental magnesium daily, taken with food to minimize stomach upset. The tolerable upper limit for supplementation of magnesium is 350 mg daily. This doesn't include magnesium from food. Healthcare providers always recommend starting low and increasing gradually while monitoring for side effects. And remember, if you're taking medications, timing matters. Maintain at least a two-hour separation from antibiotics and bisphosphonates. Here are the key takeaways. Magnesium supplementation can provide real benefits, but only when it's appropriate for your individual situation. The evidence-based approach using clinical medicine starts with a thorough assessment of your medical history, current medications, symptoms, and dietary intake. It considers the quality research on benefits and risks and prioritizes safety above all else. If you're considering magnesium supplementation, I strongly encourage you to consult with your healthcare provider. They can help you determine if supplementation is appropriate, identify any potential interactions with your medications, and recommend the most suitable form and dose for your needs. Remember, supplements are meant to supplement, not replace a healthy diet. Focus first on incorporating magnesium-rich foods like green leafy vegetables, nuts, seeds and whole grains into your daily routine. If you found this evidence-based approach helpful, please subscribe to my channel for more content where I break down the research on nutritional medicine topics. I regularly share insights from clinical practice to help you make informed decisions about your health. In the comments below, let me know what nutrition topics you'd like me to cover next. I read every comment and use the suggestions to guide my content. Until next time, remember that the best medical decisions are informed decisions based on quality evidence and individualized assessment. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you in the next video.